is Mike Reynolds. I'm the I'm a professor of English, currently chair of the English department and our first year writing program. Been at Hamlin since 2001. But I've always been a systems thinker. Um, I, I, and I think when I really found my, my place in the kind of the work towards sustainability, it's aligned with what I think I never effectively named as sustainability previously. If you're thinking about uh, where it comes from, I, I grew up in a family uh, with a lot of people with different mental and physical needs. And I, my dad was a special ed teacher. And so I was always involved. And what you begin to learn quickly if you're inside that community is that it's about a system, a real ecosystem of the way we do and don't provide access and opportunity. And I just began thinking about disability is not something that an individual has, but as, as, a, as a whole set of systems that come to bear and impact people living without disabilities. So when I think about sustainability, that's what I think about is complex systems in which we reside that uh, we could do a better job of establishing meaningful interdependent uh, use of our resources to, to, to ensure that everybody thrives. Um, and I'll, I'll, I could pick that up and talk about higher education. I could pick that up and talk about a neighborhood. I could explicitly talk about environmental stuff but I think it's a broader sweep than what what maybe I, as a coming of age in the 80s, would have thought of as sustainability would have been a much narrower range of the parks and DNR rather than this this larger sweep. Well, I mean, you joked about living in the postmodern times. I'm I'm a, a boot wearing, card carrying postmodernist. I think there's opportunity here. And what I would say is one of the things a good community does is it doesn't settle on a definition, but is constantly reimagining that definition. If we look at Hamlin Midway, we're, we're supposed to create a neighborhood plan every 10 years. So we did one 10 years ago, the city asked us to do it as a district council, and it focused on historic preservation. And one of the ways that I think I've, I, I have heard community activists um, who, who care a lot about what a good community is define their sense of it is is through they would use the word sustaining i would use the word maintaining a sense of identity based on some vision of history historic preservation become i think was a kind of synecdoche it was a, a tagline that represented hey the way we we maintain a good community is by by sticking to the identity we always have had i don't think i mean one it's picking a particular moment in time and preserving or historicizing that and it's not necessarily reflective of, for instance, the fact that 40 or 50 percent of the people living in the neighborhood rent. Um, and so historic preservation, which privileges homes and certain kinds of structures for single families, given the zoning laws, it immediately once you start emphasizing that as a good community or defining a community identity around that vision of history, you lock out certain kinds of, of, of people who live in the community already. So that's my my little plea for, you know, open-ended definition and constant inquiry into who we are and what we're doing. The second thing I do would be to, to materialize that. What are the, you know, do you have a, the right mix of housing opportunities and educational opportunities and career development opportunities to serve various different people who come in and out of a uh, vibrant city? Um, a good community Maybe it's true in every kind of, uh, you know, whether a small town or a, a city, maybe it's always true, but certainly in a city, there's so much flux in terms of who lives that you have to create that kind of dy dynamic opportunity um, that really represents different needs. You can't have a one size fits all approach to um, career development. You can't have a one size fits all approach to housing. You need a mix and you need to constantly be evaluating that mix. Good community does that in some way. And then it's just, you know, real education, uh, meaningful, substantive, critical, creative educational opportunities for all um, from pre-K pre to, you know, elder care. I, I think elder care is another thing that I've learned from some colleagues on the coalition is something we need to spend a lot more time thinking about is how to is the community you're in actually engage with folks who've aged out of um, work life and have different sorts of needs. Um, 
and I, I, the other population I would name is um, St. Paul has seen different waves of, of, of immigration. And so I think there needs to be a constant attention to cross-cultural competency as well as cross-cultural learning and cross-cultural engagement. Um, it's really easy in a city that's play, you know, for four months of the year, five months of the year is so cold that nobody goes out of the house. It's really easy just to lock into spaces and never really get to know one another. So what are the ways that we constantly shape and encourage cross uh, constituency, cross identity, engagement and collaboration and, and just convening, just public convening, um, which I've learned in the coalition is a lot harder to do than you think. <laughs>